Kepler's third law relates the period of the orbits of planets to the variables that influence the period. Please pause the video and make a list of the variables that you think will influence the period of planets' orbits around the Sun. Here I have a scale drawing that depicts a large mass object being orbited by a small mass object, a radial distance r away. We're going to use uniform circular motion to derive the formula for Kepler's third law. Again, the law that relates the period of orbits to the variables that influence the period of the orbits. So if your list included the mass of the object getting orbited, the mass of the object that does the orbiting, and the radial distance between the two, you're off to a pretty good start. Though the planets orbit in ellipses, we're going to use uniform circular motion. At the end, I'll explain the slight difference between the result of the two processes. This object is traveling along a path that's tangent to this slightly circular arc. It could be traveling either towards the top of the page or toward the bottom of the page at this very instant. But there is a gravitational force that the large mass object is exerting on it. It's as big as the gravitational force that the small mass object is exerting on the large mass object, but we're focusing on the movement of the small mass object. So this gravitational force exerted on little m by big M is the net force. You know that the net force, when you're traveling in a circle, is equal to the mass times the centripetal acceleration, which is v squared over r. As I've said, that net centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force on it. And the gravitational force is as big as g times the mass of the large object, times the mass of the small object, divided by the radial distance between the two of them squared. That's the net force. That's equal to mv squared over r. You can already see I've got the mass of the small object here and the mass of the small object there. Divide both sides by that m, and they're gone. That means that the mass of the small object does not affect the orbit we're left with the mass of the large object, the speed or velocity, and the radius of the orbit. However, we want to define the period. The, the v in orbit is equal to 2 pi times the radius, or the circumference around the orbit, divided by the period. So I'm going to substitute that in. I'm also going to note that I have r squared in this denominator and r in that denominator. So if I multiply both sides by r, this will disappear and that exponent will disappear. So I'll rewrite as g times the mass of the large object divided by r equals 2 pi, pi r divided by t squared. Again, I multiplied both sides of the equation by lowercase r, canceled this, canceled that. Now, at this point, I'm going to have to square all the factors that are inside the parentheses. So I have 4 pi squared r squared over t squared. That equals g m over r. Now, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by r, as I did up uh, earlier. So multiply this by r, multiply that by r, and that with g m which would be equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over t squared. Next, I'm going to multiply both sides by the period squared. So I have the period squared times g times big M equals 4 pi squared r cubed. I wanted to solve the equation for t, so I'm now going to divide both sides by g m. And I get that t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over g m. And I really want to group these guys together. That's because for all of the orbits of planets in our solar system, this constant 4, this constant pi, this constant g, and the mass of the sun all together are constant. 
and there we can see that the period of the orbit is simply that going to vary as the radius of the orbit varies. In fact, the period squared is proportional to the radius cubed. That has been shown to be true for the orbits of all the planets, despite the fact that the planet's orbits are elliptical. It turns out that all you need to do is replace the r that you would have for a circular orbit with the a that you would have for an elliptical orbit and you get an equation that is supported by the data that was t collected by Tycho Brahe observing the planetary orbits that he could see with his observatories. So this is proof of Kepler's third law that the period squared is proportional to the semi-major axis cubed or in a circular orbit, the period squared is proportional to the radial distance cubed.